So to demo the Hackney Vector, I thought we'd just have a nice little string synth patch and I'm going to use the three outputs, the X axis, which is horizontal, Y axis vertical and Z, which is a distance away from that sensor, which starts to pick up any object or hand usually in front of it from about 15 centimeters away. X and Y are going to control parameters within this string synth, including the note length and the tone, and the position from the sensor, the Z output, or the Z sensor, is going to change the reverb amount in my patch. So here's changing note length. It goes somewhere in the middle, up to the top, and get tonal changes. And then reverb amount as I get closer. We've got these red and blue LEDs. To show where these sensors are picking up and that also indicates some of the menu system which we'll be getting into later. We can record loops as well by starting the recording. And as soon as we stop that, this loop starts to instantly play back. We can sort of scratch this loop almost virtually like a DJ would. We can stop it, start it and record it in time which are all things we're going to be looking at a little later. So now you get the idea of this 3D sensing controller, let's dive into some patches and some different functions on there as well. So just so you can see how gorgeous these screens are and how much of a performance thing this could be visually as well as in terms of the control that you get, let's look at using two together, the black face plate and the silver face plate. We've got a wavetable synth just drawn in away, and we're using three axis on the left hand vector. This is going to control decay amount as I get closer. Wave table position in one direction. That's the X, and then for Y, the second part of this wave table oscillator. On this right hand vector, we've got the string patch from this first part of the video. So let's have a quick play around and just show how this 3D sensing on both hands can be used as a controller for two parts within a patch. So you can see that light show a little bit better and that's just some of the fun that we can get into controlling audio. So let's take a look at using the vector to control a voice with a filter, VCA and the pitch of an oscillator. We've got the VCA level on the Z control which is the distance away from that sensor. Filter in the Y position. And pitch in the X going left to right. So let's get into the menu and actually start to control some of these settings. We double tap on the bottom of the sensor. We then choose between the X, Y and the Z. I want the X control for pitch. We then get the sub menu settings down the right and I'm going to look at the range. This is currently at minus five to plus five volts. Big range for the pitch. You can scale that down to minus 2.5 volts to plus 2.5 volts. Just not to plus five. Or a single volt. And one volt is a musical octave. So we're gonna to stick to that. I want that one volt control for my pitch. Press an encoder, back out of the settings. Let's go back into the menu. 
sticking with X, and I want to look at the quantizer options. So and actually quantize each of these outputs, the X, the Y, and the Z. Pressing the encoder, we've got no quantization. Chromatic. You know that stepping. And a mid scale. and minor scales as well. Let's stick with that, I'm quite happy with that. Pressing the encoder. We've now got VCA control, filter control, and pitch control for creating a voice. You may notice if I take my hand away fast, we're getting a click on that voltage. So let's look at adding some slew. Going into the menu, and it's the Z control for the VCA. Then I'm going to scroll down to slew. And let's play around with this slew amount. quite a different sounding to that click we were getting. Yeah, so the vector is potentially a really complex module. As you've seen, it's instantly really fun. And with some basic menu settings for say range and quantize, we can get straight into controlling a patch. It can be great for controlling CV, audio, VCAs, all sorts around the system. We can also record and loop sequences. So by going into the menu, by double tapping the bottom of the center and scrolling around to record, and then go to source, and external and this is clocked and this is going to be clocked against my patch so now that we've got that external recording source set this is actually going to be clocked and I've got the same clock that's clocking the clock input on the vector triggering my sound source and I've currently just got the X output going to brightness in my patch distance and Y position it's having no effect it's just that X control. So I'm going to hit record. Notice that it starts looping instantly. Because this is clocked externally, speeding up my external clock is also going to speed up the vector. So let's do that. Slide back down. Let's go to new sequence. Now we can also overdub. We double tap the sensor area. This just now shows us which sections are actually going to be overdubbing. And we can tap to turn those off. I just want to do the Y position. So let's plug something in and actually get the Y controlling part of our system. So even though I didn't have it plugged in, that Y data was captured and this is now controlling the dampening amount and the note length in my patch. So to enter the overdub, we press the illuminated switch to enter the overdub. So we've now got a new overdub on that Y position. Again, both bits of data following the clock. And this overdub works like a cut in and cut out. It won't record data when there's nothing in the sensor area. So this is still in overdub mode, but it's not gonna overdub until I'm actually have my hand in that area. 
how let's turn we're back in overdub so let's overdub the z position and change part of our patch with that again we've already got data captured for the z position but let's actually start overdubbing Double tapping at the bottom, as we do for the menu, takes us out of that, and we've got three axis with two overdub parts of loops. We can start to split these voltages as well. So let's actually take our output into a processor. This is still all under control of that clock. Flicking the encoder to the left, you can actually stop the recording. And to the right, takes it back to the normal mode. So that's just some of the things you can do with the vector. Some of those very instantly fun and instantly gratifying. Others just need a couple of tweaks on that menu just to get it doing what you want it to do. It does remember these settings on power down. So if you've got external sources for the recording clock, you've got some ranges selected. You can also save some sequences in there. So it can be a very complex and powerful module, both for instant fun and for recording performances to go out live or as a tool to create new CV sources, spitting out this 3D CV across the system.